Hi, hey, hello, and welcome. I'm Liam, and this is Snowed In by Spirally Media. Last episode, I talked about the mid-April snowstorm the Northeast United States got, which ski resorts were still open, and which ones had recently closed, new chairlift news, including updates on the East's first ever eight-person chairlift, which is being installed at Loon, and finally, I ranked my top five ski trips I went on this past season. This episode will be a bit different. Instead of talking about news and weather and all that stuff I did last time, I shall do my own review on Mount Snow Resort in southern Vermont and a trail guide segment on Sunday River. To start today's episode off, here is our first in many resorts in a segment I like to call Trail Guide. Uh, yeah, sorry, I couldn't figure out a better name for that. <laughs> Sunday River is a big resort. It's spread out over eight different mountain peaks with 135 trails and 15 lifts. Similar to Killington in Vermont, you kind of need to know where you are going at Sunday River to get around to the different peaks. So for the first trail guide showing today, I will give a full description on how to get around the big main resort of Sunday River. The first guide is if you are a beginner skier. If you are starting out at the South Ridge and Barker base area, which is the main base at Sunday River, you'll probably end up spending most of your day at South Ridge and North Peak because this is like the central beginner area of the resort. For your first run, definitely head up the South Ridge Express and take Broadway down. This is the perfect run for beginners. Slightly windy at the beginning, but great for wide turns at the end, and it's almost always groomed. Once you spend your morning doing some laps off the South Ridge Express and Dream Maker Trail off the Chondala, which is a really great trail for beginners starting to get the hang of things, you could just either just end your day there or take the Barker Mountain Express up to the top of Barker Mountain and ski down the beginner three mile trail. It's an easy green traverse that ends up back at the top of the Chondala. Lollapalooza is also a super fun green over at Jordan Bowl, but just be aware if you are a beginner skier, it is slightly harder than the other greens on the mountain. Alrighty then, time for the intermediate guide. I am mostly in an intermediate skier, so this will be the best explanation from me. Personally, I think Barker Mountain is the best for intermediates, and it's probably my favorite peak at Sunday River. To start your day off, that is if you're starting at the South Ridge or Barker Base area once again, I would recommend taking Lazy River down first. It's a calm, mellow, windy trail that has a good pitch at first, um, but then there are some super fun rolls toward the middle. It then dumps onto Risky Business Trail, and if you keep going past the Spruce Peak Triple Lower Terminal and go down Taurus Trap, this will bring you right back to the Barker Express. I would also recommend taking Ecstasy to Sunday Punch or Cascades. You can't go wrong with either. However, both get pretty skied out uh, as the day goes on, so make sure you hit those in the morning if you do want to. If you're staying at the Jordan Hotel or just want to ski in the Aurora Jordan area, you have two really great options over at Jordan Bowl, Rogue Angel and Excalibur. These two intermediate trails are long and wide with some fun rolls and pitches here and there, and they are mostly always groomed. Northern Lights Trail over on Aurora Peak is also a great one. This is another one of my favorites. Oh, and I almost forgot about Spruce Peak. Similar to Jordan Bowl, Spruce Peak has two slightly steeper but fun blue runs called American Express and Risky Business. These two are great groomers, and again, they sometimes can get pretty skied out during the day. The last guide is, of course, experts. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. You probably will end up spending most of your day either at Whitecap or Oz. Sunday River is famous for their trail called White Heat. It's apparently one of the longest, steepest, and widest trails in the East. And what's also special about it is that half of the trail is tough moguls and the other half is most of the time groomed, which is cool. Shockwave and Obsession are neighbors to White Heat and are also great expert trails, the former being covered in moguls and the latter being a single black groomer. And then there's Oz. Oz is Sunday River's downtown area for glades and moguls, I like to say. It has the highest summit elevation out of all eight peaks, and the mostly expert trails there are serviced by one fixed grip quad lift. There are around seven expert trails on Oz, and around four of them are glades. 
The other ones are more open with a few trees dotting the trail but are still really tough. The Osquad only opens at 10 a.m. on the weekends, but midweek when it's not open, you can drop into some of the trails accessed by Kansas, the Traverse Trail starting at Jordan Bowl. Aurora Peak has some gnarly terrain as well, like Supernova, Black Hole, and Air Glow, but Oz and Whitecap are the most well-known. Well, I know that was a lot of me blabbering about trails and whatnot, but I hope it helps some people looking to visit Sunday River. The second and last thing on the agenda for today's episode is a review I wrote on Mount Snow. In the southern part of the quiet green mountains in Vermont, a bustling mountain lays with 86 trails, 20 lifts, and 600 acres of skiing terrain, otherwise known as Mount Snow. First, travel. Mount Snow is extremely easy to get to from Boston. Just take Route 2 west for 80 miles until you reach Route 91. Take this north up to Brattleboro. Then take Route 9 west to Wilmington and turn right into Route 100. Then you'll just take that right up to the mountain. Coming from New York City, also easy. Take Route 95 East to 91 North. Stay at 91 for 100 miles and take exit 26 and go west on Route 2 for five minutes. Then you're gonna take a ride on Route 112 and stay north on Route 100 until you get to the mountain. Mount Snow is located in the town of Dover, Vermont. The town doesn't really have a downtown area. There's no actual main street. So that's kind of a little flaw to Mount Snow. However, there are a couple good restaurants nearby, so at least that's good. The nearby town of Wilmington, which is 15 minutes south of the mountain, is really the closest town. It has lots of cute shops and restaurants, and there are a couple inns hotels there as well. Now for lodging and dining. The Grand Summit Hotel is the only on-mountain slope-side lodging option at Mount Snow. When I came here, this is where I stayed. To be honest, it wasn't really the best. The people were mostly nice and helpful, but food options at the hotel weren't great. And the hotel itself was not super modern or cozy, and the room was definitely not worth the price. If I were to go again, I think I would stay somewhere else, but within 10 minutes of the mountain. Other nearby lodging options include the Lodge at Mount Snow, the Snow Lake Lodge, the Inn at Mount Snow, and the Mountaineer Inn. There are more small inns slash motels within 15 minutes of the mountain. Like I said earlier, the food options at the mountain aren't the best out there. They're good, just not the best. Really, the only restaurant inside the Grand Summit Hotel is Harriman's Restaurant. The food here is decent, the service is fine, and sometimes they also have live music as well, which is kind of nice. In the base lodge, the 1900-foot burger is an American restaurant with your standard American dishes. There is also Cousin Bar and Grill with a similar story to Harriman's. All right, finally about the mountain itself. The lifts overall at Mount Snow are okay. The Bluebird Express six-pack bubble chair is cool and all, but it gets mobbed on the weekends because of the close proximity to Boston and New York City. And the lift lines are insanely slow and long, not to mention the lift stops every so often. The Grand Summit Express is a similar story. Overall, most of the lifts are slow, have long lines, and some stop relatively often. However, my favorite lift is the Bear Trap Double. Why? Because for some reason, I like doubles a lot. And this one is slow, but short, uh, and it usually has music at the lower terminal, and you can sometimes watch races on the mogul-filled trail bear track below you as you ride up, which is fun. It's finally time to talk about Mount Snow's trails and terrain. Mount Snow is kind of split into four areas. The main face, where most of the blue and green groomers are, which is also the most crowded area most of the time. The north face, where almost all the blocks and double blocks are held. Corinthia, the famous 100-acre terrain park area, and finally the Sunbrook area, which is the quietest, the smallest, and my personal favorite skiing area at Mount Snow. It has almost all intermediate groomers. The only thing I will say is that the main lift is a fixed grip quad, so not high speed, and it takes forever to go up. If you want a real challenge, try the trail ripcord at the North Face area. It's the only double black on the mountain. An intermediate groomer, the whole Sunbrook area will be your paradise. An easy green groomer with views, Long John is the longest trail at Mount Snow and runs from summit to base. It is easy but very fun and has stunning views as well. A must-do trail if you go, even if you are an advanced skier or boarder. In the end, I think I would rate Mount Snow a 7 out of 10. Lodging and food options aren't the greatest, it gets extremely crowded, and some lifts are slow and a couple of them could really use an update. But the terrain is excellent, and the conditions are usually pretty good, and the grooming is great as well. 
The mountain also has a good variety of trails and areas for everyone. So do I recommend Mount Snow? Well, if you care about skiing more than other things, then yes, absolutely. And that's all I got for you today on this second Snow Den episode. Hopefully you liked the trail guide and review segments, as well as the stuff I did last episode. And hopefully you are liking our content overall. The next Snowden video will be out on Saturday, May 29th.